We're at Farnborough today and we're talking to Mr. Martin Moller, who's the chairman of the board of NAC, which is Nordic Aviation Capital, based out of Denmark. And today we had some interesting information, Mr. Moller, that uh, your company has decided to be involved in some interesting deals with Bombardier on the Q400 and on the CRJ. Could you tell our viewers a little bit about those deals? Well, we have been involved uh, in dealing with Bombardier already for quite a few years. Uh, uh, and specifically lately, uh, we have been involved in two campaigns. Uh, Eurolot uh, from Poland decided uh, for the Q400 as part of a, a, a refleeting of their regional fleet. And um, we really believe in the Q400. Uh, it's a fantastic airplane for the missions it was built for. Uh, and um, when Eurolot approached us and asked if we would like to submit our offer for, for being the lessor for their fleet, <coughs> we were happy uh, for, for the two things, uh, a good operator and a good airplane. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm happy that we have already closed on uh, five aircraft or delivered, sorry, delivered four aircraft to them. Uh, aircraft number five you saw here on the show and it will be delivered to them in a week or two. And we have committed to doing uh, a sixth airplane to them and we're in discussions uh, about number seven and number eight. That's on the Q400 side. Um, a few weeks ago it was made uh, public that we had signed an order to buy 12 CAJ-1000 aircraft uh, to be leased to Garuda, Indonesia. And uh, that is a rather special order for us given that we are predominantly a turboprop leasing company. Um, we have a policy that at least 85% of our fleet must be regional aircraft and well, the CRJ-1000 is certainly also a regional airplane but predominantly we are talking about the source. Um, we have in-depth product, product knowledge when it comes to all the big turboprops on the market of course, uh, whereas the CRJ-1000 we had to sit down and, and really study the airplane because fundamentally uh, we don't just give airli uh, airlines what they ask for from us, we got to be convinced as well about the business case, we got to be convinced that we have a good operator, we certainly got to be convinced that the product they want is the right for the mission uh, and that the mission is profitable. And in the case of the CAD 1000, uh, we looked at, at that airplane and its performance, its economics and all the alternatives and it, it takes a lot to surprise an industry veteran like me, but I was truly surprised about the performance, about the economics especially. Uh, it's, a, and it's a new airplane, but it's built on a very mature platform and I was speaking to existing operators uh, in Europe and Nordstrom and Britair and they're so enthusiastic about it. The entry into service has just been, reliability has just been fantastic. And um, when Garuda chose this type and, uh, and asked us for our offer, uh, we felt really good getting involved in this program. So when, the, when this, those two other operators for the CRJ came out and announced that the fuel burn, for example, was 3% better than expected <coughs> in your own research, did you find it was that case or maybe even better than well, that? Well, we, we heard it from their own, we heard them saying it with their own mouth. Uh, we saw the enthusiasm in their faces. Uh, I think they just wished they would have uh, had their airplanes even sooner. Uh, and the fuel burn is already extremely low uh, compared to the alternatives uh, Garuda had uh, to look at out there. Uh, I mean, the operating economics of, of that aircraft is just amazing. It is the perfect stretch. Uh, and. Uh, I'm just surprised that we did not see this coming at, a, at an earlier stage. But as for now, we're more than happy to get involved in more of the same time. Now, when you when you say more, uh, that's that's obviously my. I'm going to go to my next question. When you look out in the market right now, where do you see big opportunities for ch changes in regional jets? Mm -hmm. Clearly, the the smaller regional jets are have proven to be caught, the fuel prices caught up, but their economics. So now we have obviously the, the larger regional jets which are making sense, but then of course, particularly in North America, the US, you run into scope clauses. How do you see the future in, in the area that you specialize in? 
Well, again, there's this distinct difference between the turboprop market, which is big and growing at a steady rate, at a very good rate. It's, an, it's a type that is there to stay for, for many, many years into the future. As for the regional debt market, which is not our main market, but it's a market that will be growing uh, with us and with our portfolio, I personally am of the hope that scope clauses will soon be something of the past because the airlines, these unions uh, have uh, people flying for or working with, they really need uh, the best economics and that means it, should not, it shouldn't be scope clauses ruling what equipment they're getting. So uh, as for what future I see, well there is a very clear and a very open demand uh, or a very strong demand uh, uh, coming from North America. Uh, it's open in the press that there is a three, four hundred aircraft uh, demand there for the next few years uh, to be ordered. So uh, I see North America as the place where there will be most large regional debt orders.